Welcome back to the 3D series where you guys get to decide what we have to use. Mm. You should know the concept by now. You know the concept by now, didn't you, Bart? Bones. <laughs> <laughs> he wishes he was as good looking as me. <laughs> um, yeah, so three items in here from DNA. We haven't These got Scooby. The only items we're allowed to use for the whole time we're here. Yeah, so let's delve in and uh, have a look at what we have. I'm nervous because the bag. The bag felt cold earlier. Yeah. The box felt cold. Oh, something's frozen. Oh, that's oh. not bad. Oh. 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 Right, you get the first item out. Right, we got, well, we got one of my favourites, some PBs, all in 10 millis. <laughs> nice. 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 I love a PB. They're, they're, but they have, but that, then that's going to work. That's Bart gonna work. loves a PB. I mean, Bones loves a PB. <laughs> Absolutely oh, loves at, a PB. I've just realised what they are. Oh, and then we got some of the new beautiful Helena Snickwit. Nice. Nice. Bottle of that. I've been yeah. using this quite a lot recently. Yeah, I've had a play with it. It's nice, isn't it? It is really it's nice success. unless you taste it. Yeah, it's very salty. And then something I, I haven't used for a much. long, long time. Oh! There's Not two bags. Two. There is two bags. I didn't. When we picked the boxes up, I thought there's only five kilo in there. Especially where we are, we're going to need a bit of bait. Now that. What have we got? We've got five, five kilo dumbbells. Yeah. Yes, I haven't messed with dumbbells in a while. Make some hard on the frozen dumbbell bugs here. Yeah, you? they're going to need to defrost for a little bit. A little bit. It's 80 degrees, man. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, that's happy days. I'm happy with that. Much happier so than what. Are they what both we got the same or are they different? Last time. So we've got 10 kilos, but that. Oh no, they are both dumbbells. Yeah, yeah nice, yeah, nice. Yeah, nice. nice. I'm pleased with that. That's much more pleasing than what we got last time. Those yeah, 20 what? 22 mil, mil boilies in. Uh, yeah, it's days of the year. Yeah, happy days. Right, so the person that has chosen this bait for us is Tinny's Tiddlers. Leon Holloway, isn't it? Leon Holloway. So well done, nice, Leon. Leon. Thank you to the last person. Sent out. Bodes, <laughs> <laughs> he's been sending the Alaskis and letters and everything. <laughs> <laughs> he's still trying to get him for over the it. I know. I thanked him for the three ghosties. That's how it was. Yeah. I was pleased with them. Well, you're the only person that will ever thank anyone for three ghosties. I think if you recall the the voting on the uh, social media side of things, Moz. Uh, all agree that you're That's because none of them people have ever caught ghosty in their life. That was the <laughs> only reason why. Ghosties do not count. I hope to God you catch a ghost. I'll tell you what, I'll be really pleased. There is a few so fish like, about, that's for sure. There is. Mm. So if you haven't guessed already, we're at Embryo's Norton Disney. Yep. You've got something crawling on me. It'll be me later on. <laughs> Get off me. So we're at Embryo's Norton Disney, and you know this place a little bit better than I've me. Been, so. I've been up here once for a look round, and then once I fished it uh, last winter for one of our winter series mm. then with, with Tracker. Um, it's a great, great place. Tracker Mark, are doing the winter series? How well, we don't, we don't do a winter series. We do a <laughs> cold water carping, so it's just to keep things going through the winter, as yeah, you know. It's, it's a tough time of year to get out, and it's inspiring people to get out. But we came up here, and we actually fished on the lake we're on now, which is Turner's. And... Um, after having a chat with the bailiff Ben earlier, he, he sort of said, you know, probably be a good shout. And I mean, we've got the double swim, 10 and 11. There's nine loads. 9 and 10, isn't it? Nine, no, 10 and 11. Oh, 9, nine and 10. 10. No, it's I 9 and 10. Yeah. 9 and 10, that's right. Eight's over there. But I mean, look at the place. It's fantastic. You've got all these big swims, they're nice and flat, really comfortable. You, there's plenty of parking. You know, it's a fantastic fishery with loads of different style lakes. You've got, there's a little lake behind us. I know there's a real massive one with the smaller fish. This has got fish over 40 pound in. You've got petits for fish over mm. 40. There's three, three fish over 40 pound. Yeah, he reckons at the minute one. there's three over 40 in this lake, which would be, which would be quite be lovely to uh, land one of them on a 3D. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, we've got a good chance of a couple of bites, that's for sure. There's fish knocking about in the area. Um, but yeah, fantastic fishery that's just going from strength to strength, really. Mm. Yeah, I'm really pleased with it. Wicked, mm. right. Okay, so... We'll have to get our thinking caps on rig-wise, I suppose, with this. Yeah, it, it's and what's nice with the old dumbbell is I'm thinking, you know, you can, especially with having a 10 miller, just take that dumbbell off flat, little 10 miller a bit, will just give it a little bit of buoyancy. Mm. Um, and then maybe some, with them being 10s, it's, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how I can play around with the 10 mil pop Yeah, rig-wise, I think we're going to have to think about that. Isn't yeah, it? it's barbless hooks here, obviously, as well. So I'm going to have to tie some bits up anyway. Mm. But yeah, I'm thinking I'd, if I can find some clear spots, you know, a D-Wig or something, just with one of those wafters on, one of these dumbbells on, just cut off, you know, one of these on top will just sit that real nice. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. So we can give that a go. Well, mm. I'll avoid that then, hopefully uh, do something. 
Now you're gonna string you're gonna string three of these together, aren't you, the size two. Yeah. In fact you're gonna make the triple ball, bollocks is it the ball, ring. Triple bollocks ring, aren't you? The triangular ball. The uh, triangular tri ball. ball. <laughs> right. Let's get it on. Wicked. Right, right. let's do this. Yeah, let's go. Right, so obviously we know what bait that we're using. Now what I've actually done is I've put five kilos in one bucket, five kilos in the other, and then I've put half the liquid in each of the buckets, but saved myself a tiny bit of liquid here. Bones is hanging around in the background. He's like, ooh, tips, tips. So, <laughs> so what I've done is saved myself a tiny bit of liquid there for hook bait. So all I'm gonna use is, Little pot full like so of hook baits. So what there's about 15 hook baits there. Catch 15, that'd be nice. And then just gonna pour a little bit of that liquid over them and make sure that they're sort there's about five mil sat in the bottom of that pot. Now what that does, that liquid, is it forms a skin around your hook baits. I used this last week, this stuff, and uh, left it out in the sun and then after about three or four hours, you end up with this lovely skin of the liquid around your bottom bait. So that's what I'm gonna do with mine here, is leave them out in the sun. I've got myself a little pot, always save me pop-up pots for things like this. Leave them out there. What I might do is actually pour some onto the lid so they've got a bit more space. And just let them sit there. And once they take on that liquid, in about half hour, an hour or so, there'll be no more liquid left in there. The freezer bait would have absorbed all of that liquid and then you'll end up with a skin around them. So every now and then I'll just give them a little bit of a shake, dry them out, and then you can just keep adding a tiny bit more liquid on top of your hook baits and start building that skin up around them. Okay, so I am on the left-hand side of the swim, been totally stitched up. He's on the flyer, he's got so many fit. As soon as we walked in the swim, he spotted a ghosty. That was him done, that was it, he lost it. He's like, oh my God, ghosty, I'm on the right, I'm on the right. And Ben's turned up, who runs Norton Disney, and he said, the right-hand side's the absolute flyer. Oh, shut up. <laughs> You're gonna do well on the left, Moz, so, you know, in all fairness, he still hasn't caught a carp yet for the DNA camera, so I let him go on the right-hand side. And he's got loads of fish all over him, fizzing, etc., etc. You didn't catch a carp, Bones. Let's not get into this argument again. So, I've had a little bit of a lead up out in front of the swim, and at 17 and a half wraps, there's a strip, strip's a bit excessive, a tiny bit of gravel out there that I've found in 16 and a half foot of water. I know, I've been proper stitched up here, but in all fairness, at least that's something to go on. I found a tiny bit of gravel there. I'm gonna fish at the back of it. And I would say at about 17 wraps, you're probably dead center of the gravel spot. So 17 and a half, that's right at the back of the spot. But I'm actually gonna spot at 17 wraps. It's all a bit confusing, I know, but because it's 16 and a half foot of water, so casting at 17 and a half drops me on the, bot on the back of the spot and then if I come back half a rod length, that should land smack bang on top of my hook bait. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm in the process of that now. I've seen the bait that I'm gonna be spotting out. I'm probably gonna put a bucket out there to start with. So five kilo out there, I'm going all in. And I'm gonna put all three rods over the top of that as well. I'm gonna fish one slightly off of it and two in the heart of the bait.
hold on, I'll turn you back two seconds. So I've just uh, had my first bite. So go to the other side. I'm gonna have to land this in between these two rods. Is. Come on. Amazing, isn't it? Because you, Moz has gone in slightly heavier with bait than me, and I'm pretty confident. It's in fish showing over the top of Moz, and I'm pretty confident that the only reason I've had a slightly quicker bite is because I didn't put quite as much out. So he's going to be nearly ready in a second, hopefully. See that little PB in the side of its mouth? <laughs> Come on, then. Let's get you up. Get some air in you. Oh, don't go there, there's a big rock. There we go, there we go. Over she goes. Up it goes. Look at that, she looks quite nice. About 16, 17 pounds. I always like it when you get the first one. <laughs> Lovely Norton Disney mirror carp. Couldn't resist one of those 10 mil PB pop-ups. It sat perfectly on the little Ronnie with a size six. Just sat real nice, just like a wafter. So I was really positive it was going to go off. Had some fish showing over the spot. They've had about two and a half kilo of those dumbbells now. Some mulched up with some of that callinus liquid. So let's slip her back and hopefully get another one. <laughs> You're away as well, are you? Oh, I'm away as well. Bones is away as well. Bye time. <laughs> <laughs> Bye time. Well, it is a, it's a little bit manic in the swim. It's crazy, really, because... <laughs> um, we were just saying, weren't we? Yeah, it's... We'll do it, a bite. It's been raining hard, unfortunately. The weather has been absolutely savage. And we got a bite at the exact same time, didn't we, Bones? So Bones is playing one at the minute, which I think he's about to net. And I've got one on as well. Is it both middle rods? Yeah. Yeah, wow. So yeah, both middle rods have gone. Mine, mine a split second before Bones is. And uh, yeah, like I said, it, the weather's been savage, but now the rain's stopped. It's gone flat calm, and yeah, we're both into one. Bones is about to get his in the net. All right, that's Bones's one in, and mine's just behind him, look. Oh, double whammy. <laughs> mine's bigger than yours. <laughs> that is unreal, isn't it? <laughs> Two bites, both on the middle rod. Yours is bigger than mine. Mine definitely bigger than Bones is. Bones is on them. I'm just picking up the stragglers. That's how it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's a bell to mine. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. An absolutely pristine little Norton Disney common carp. Proper pleased with this one. Couldn't resist that little PB pop up just seems to be working. It's actually my third bite. I lost the first one. The second one I had in absolutely torrential rain 
Um, it was a lovely looking move of about 14, 15 pound, but it had to get back in the water pretty quick because I was getting absolutely drowned. And uh, yeah, third bite, this little common, what was really weird was we were just saying we thought we should be getting another bite. Moz's rod's ripped off. And within about three seconds, so is mine. I've managed to get mine in the net and here she is. An absolute stunning little common. about that for my first Norton Disney carp showing off his dorsal and everything for us give him a little bounce that gets their dorsals up if you've never known that before but that will definitely do 21 pounds 8 ounces and that was caught on the dumbbell bottom bait tipped off with that little 10 mil PB pop up I'm absolutely buzzing with that that is one serious carp Oh, mega, absolutely mega. Nice to be off the mark for myself and Bonesy. And uh, fingers crossed there's plenty more of these to come, that's for sure. What a carp. Wicked. <laughs> oh, wait. Here we go, bite number four. <laughs> now, this time a little mirror carp, about 18 pound I'd say. Hook holds have been cracking, fights from the carp have been amazing. So hopefully, me and Mel's have got a few more of these fish to come. <laughs> Good morning. Had a bit of an eventful morning this morning. I managed one while oh, she was snoring. I, I heard it. I was going to come out and help you, but I was like, nah, sounds small. <laughs> <laughs> it was small. Yes, I had a lovely scaly one this morning after a rechuck on that middle rod. Bit of an odd one why the middle rods seem to have gone. Same for you last night, yeah. wasn't it? Your middle rod. Well, it was, it was my middle rod, but obviously I'd got two on that spot and one over on the margin, hadn't I? Of course you have, mm. yeah, yeah. Where I'm fishing all three on my spot. And yeah, the middle rod went obviously twice last night, one with that 20 pounder and that lovely little scaly one this morning. So what I've done is I've actually changed two of the hook baits over to that sort of bottom bait dumbbell with the- It did you a bigger fish, top. didn't it, yesterday? Mm. Yeah. And uh, I got up this morning and it was a bit quiet through the night, like late through the night. And I thought I might have a changeover and see if the bottom moving over to a bottom yeah. bait might do a better fish. Yeah, yeah. So I think anything that was sort of popped up slight, like, like yeah. obviously them double 10 millers, nothing, absolutely nothing on that bang on the spot as well. But then ones that that rod that was hard on the bottom, that was the one that did me the two yeah. bites. So I've changed the other two over now. The reason why I haven't changed the third is because I've done something totally different with that and put an adjustable zig out. There's an area just in front of us. So I would say it's probably about 12 wraps that we've seen them show. And yesterday evening... Um, they kept showing in the uh, same spot, didn't they? Yeah, exact same spot just out here. It looks about 12 wraps out, I would say. I'll let you poach into my water a little bit. And, <laughs> well, as soon as you're on the flyer, 
<laughs> so yeah, there was a, a group of geese come flying over and disturb loads right up on the surface. Now it's obviously about 16 foot of water out there, hence why I put the adjustable zig on. But our little 10 miller, that pops up a size 10 hook. Hook that I always use when I'm surface fishing and nine times out of 10 never get hook pulls from. So I've put an adjustable zig out there on that area. I've set my alarm for every hour to actually take a foot off. So every hour, take a foot off of it. I've actually measured the hook length so it's from the butt eye to the reel. So once you pop the float up on the surface, you move the line from the butt eye back to the reel and then you know that you're just under the surface at that point take a foot off, take another foot off. So that's my alarm in the background yeah. going. <laughs> right that's, on there's the a first adjustment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so that obviously needs a foot taken off of it now because it's had about an hour out there. So you've had a little bit of a change up as well, haven't you? Yeah, so my margin spot, I just put a bag on it. And uh, I thought this morning what I'd do is I'd spread some bait over it. But my baited area, I did slightly different to you in the fact that you kept all your baits whole and I've put a little bit of chop and crumb in there because I wanted to create more of an area that sort of kept the fish grubbing around to try and get some numbers going. Mm. And it seemed to be working last night and then it slowed right up when it went flat calm. So what I've done today, I've actually changed my rigs over and I've changed them all over to that little dumbbell with a 10 mil pop-up on top because you had a better fish on that. And I yeah. thought, you know what? I'm going to try going over to food baits just to see where there was a difference because all of my mm. rods were on single 10 mil pop-ups. So what I've done is I've baited the spot again quite heavily this morning um, with some more chops, some more crumb and some more dumbbells with plenty of the callanus liquid on it. And then what I've done is I've took some plain dumbbells, covered them in the callanus and left them for a bit so they absorbed it. And what I'm going to do... You haven't, you've nicked mine. <laughs> I you, have not, you, I've you've made nicked, my own. You haven't, oh. you've nicked mine. Go on. Oh. On, that'd be that. nice that would be nice but yeah what i've done on the margin side is i've actually walked round and i've hand baited a nice area probably mm. about the size of maybe this swim so i've created an area to keep the fish moving around if a bait tight then they can come in there the bait can be cleared out quite quickly by my thoughts are by creating a bit more of a spread area the fish have got to move between baits so it'll keep them in the area longer yeah. and then i've just put again same rig out there little dumbbell little 10 mil pop-up and i've cast it over there what's interesting is when i walk around there's a big bed of weed that sticks out so if you fish tight to the margin you'd be right in the weed but right. without walking around i wouldn't have known that so i've gone round and i've seen i need to be about two rod lengths off um add a little cast around it was it was about 10 foot deep and i've banged that rig over there so let's hope it tanks off sweet mm. so well my rods are all back out as well they're back out on that exact same spot 17 and a half wraps been spumming over the top at 17 wraps and yeah fingers crossed something happens soon we did see a better one drift into your corner yeah, yesterday as well didn't we i so don't I think. think that corner gets fished that much because it is a bit round to the right there's a known area in my swim which is over towards where the landslide is which is where my baited spot is mm. and with that spot if i haven't had a bite probably like you're doing every hour on your zig if i haven't had a bite after a couple of hours i'm just going to keep topping it up with a couple of three spoms i think the yeah. fish very used to hearing spoms it in the water they're very used to it meaning food mm. so if i'm not getting bites and then again if i start getting bites then i'll just keep topping it up and hopefully keep them there and manage to bag a few more wicked right mm. let's hope we get a few bites today that'd be nice as long as i get more than you I really want a ghost. You could sweep your net in your really water and catch in. one. <laughs> You've got that many carp in your swim. I no, do there's... hope you catch a ghost. <laughs> I really do hope you catch there's a ghost. There's been ghosting. plenty of fish shown over you, Mark. Love that. I haven't seen a single one this morning. I haven't. They haven't showed as much this morning as they did last no. night. They showed loads last yeah, night. Yeah, they, they did. Yeah, they were active last night. And there was a this lot of shows of year, all over though. the place. A lot of nighttime bites yeah. coming into the autumn. So. Well, we've got another night, so mm. we've got a nice day and the sun's shining, so we can sit yeah. here and chill. You yeah. promised to cook me dinner later? Yeah, I suppose. If I, I have, have a candle. Have you got a candle? I have, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good tea, that I made, wasn't it? Simultaneous tea swig, then. Was it? Mm. Good, Good tea, nice. though, wasn't it? It weren't bad. What did you put in it? Well, I didn't actually put the milk in first like you do, you <laughs> idiot. There's nothing wrong with putting the milk in first, mate. Don't start this again. To, oh, God, if I have to explain this to people anymore. There's the no same, explaining. You same, don't, amount, you... same amount of milk in every single cup of tea, which means you get the perfect cup of tea every single time. You don't. If your tea gets too strong, you have to put too much milk in to bring it back. 
No. The tea's too, if you don't leave the tea bag in long enough, no. enough it's too weak. You adjust with the milk that you put no. into it. No. So you put Jace, the tea bag Jace in. Jace and DNA will agree 100%. Jace you put the milk in first. knows nothing <laughs> <laughs> about tea making. He'll be sat there crying now. At the he knows something there, about baking, babe, but tea <laughs> making is not his forte. <laughs> and obviously not yours either. Ooh. You put the tea bag in first, then the hot water. I'd give and you a then you were just by the amount of milk you put in at that point. You know, Don't do you know what the you milk are? milk in first and decimate you know the are? TB bag. You're a TB te bag. You're a teaist. No, I have a teaist. Fishist and, and a, a teaist. teaist. <laughs> 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 oh, God. I'm awake. I'm Well then, no sooner had I dispatched about half a kilo of those dumbbells onto that far margin, a rod was placed over there and it's rattled off with one of Norton Disney's better fish. 27 pound, two ounce of beautiful mirror carp. Couldn't resist that dumbbell. I switched over from the 10 mil pop-ups to a dumbbell top with a pop-up. Mozzo had had a slightly better fish on it. So I thought maybe I'll put a bit of food bait on the hook and it seems to have resulted quite well with this absolutely stunner. So, Time to get that rod back over to the margin and see if there's another bite there. So let's have a quick look at the rig that I'm using here. I did start off with a different rig. So I started off the session using a, a Ronnie rig, but I used a little 10 mil pop up on it. And what it did is it just picked the hook up. So it wafted really, really nice. But after a couple of fish and Moz had a couple of fish, Moz had a slightly bigger fish. Now Moz was fishing using a dumbbell. So I thought I'm gonna add a little bit of food there. They're gonna be very used to picking up those dumbbells. So I tied up a blowback rig. It's a very simple rig to tie. I've got a size six curved shank signet hook there with which is barbless obviously because all of Norton Disney is barbless. I've then tied a large loop in the hair so that means that the dumbbell when you put so you put your pop up on top then you've got your dumbbell the knot of the loop stops the dumbbell sliding down the hair onto a rig ring that I position opposite where the barb would normally be coming down to a small kicker from signet and what that does is just gives me a nice little kick to the hook and then I've got some semi stiff material now I use the semi stiff because it's just got that little bit more to push it away but what I'm fishing over is quite clear so I'm quite happy using a slightly stiffer material to an anti-tangle because I like a quick change rig but that rig has done me plenty of bites while we've been here and the hook holes have been absolutely incredible you can dip these into the callanus afterwards so once you just before you cast them out dip them in leave them for two or three minutes so it just absorbs into a little bit cast it out and that's going to get you bites <laughs> No, 
Yeah, that's fine. Well, there we go. <laughs> Just put that 27 back, rewrap the rod, cast it straight back out with a fresh rig. It's been about 20 minutes and it's gone off again. Doesn't feel quite as good as that last fish, but it's another bite, which is happy, happy, happy days. Moz has just seen one over his spot as well. It's the first one he's seen today. His spot's definitely a little bit quieter than it was yesterday. I think what I'm gonna have to do when Moz went looking is pinch some of his whole boiling so I can go and put a little bit more on that spot. Oh. Come on, be a ghosty. I don't think there's that many in here. I did see one over there yesterday. It's going to get in here a little bit. It's a little bit shallow in the edge. Yeah, you can see now the wind's just picked up a little bit that it's definitely pushing into that margin. I'm kind of hoping that's moved the fish over there. And there might be a few more bites out of this margin to come yet today. So I'll get this one in. It might be an area that doesn't get fished that much because it is a lot more to the right. And I think a lot of people, come on, Bubby, in you come. And she's in. Yes. Second one from the margin spot. <laughs> Happy days. Come on, the gallerners. So here we go. Fish number two off that marginal spot. And that's two fish in less than an hour, including one that was 27 pound. So I want to get this back in the water nice and quick so I can get one of those dumbbells topped with a 10 mil PB pop up back out there and see if there's more fish to be had. Come on. <laughs> Hander has busted off, thank God. In all fairness, I've not seen a lot over my area all day. We've seen one fish show on the zone. So I'm more than happy to be playing one at the minute. And he's, <laughs> he's kited hard right in the swim, so I'm hoping it's not gonna... Stay away from my rod. Not gonna do the bonio in. Fingers crossed, these underneath his lines. That's what's nice about these deep pits, I guess, is you can play them underneath all the other lines, which is pretty cool. So we've missed our zig on the right hand rod as well. Again, that was a little bit of a worry, but managed to coax him over the top of that zig as well, which is ideal. So so this is another one of the lovely Norton Disney scalies, that'd be nice. Oh, he likes kiting right in. to tell whether they're big or not in this deep water, isn't it? Let's feel a better one, but that's whether he is or not. Let's pull him the way he's going, hopefully he'll turn round. Tell you what, he's wallowing around like he's a big one. See it, like the rod tip just like giving it the old big fish wallow. As I'm playing this, it's feeling like a better fish, this one. It's sort of just wallowing about a bit, but again, in that deep water, it's difficult to say and where they've 
busting off like that. Sometimes they, that's a telltale sign of a <laughs> small one. But all about the big ones, I guess. But we did hear some giants in here last night. Some big old sloshes out in front of me and Bones. But yeah, I'd like to get this one in for sure. The fish haven't been in my side of the swim like they have Bones's. Crikey, I'm surprised that when he lands a fish, another one doesn't go in the net at the same time. <laughs> Yeah, looking around the lake, there's not been many bites today. There was quite a few this morning though. People were catching a fair few this morning, but sort of as the day's gone on, yeah, it's been a little bit quiet for everyone really. So that does look like he's playing like a slightly better fish. It does, mate. Yeah, it does. It does feel like a better one. He's staying down low and he's sort of wallowing around down there like a big one would do. But it's when they bust off like that, it always makes you think, mm, is it a small one? Come on, you. Look, there's bubbles coming up as well. Another sign of a big one. Come on, talk that big one. Blowing in. bubbles. Come on, the giant. Come on, talk a big one. He's sort of ploughing up and down like a big one would, isn't he? Yeah. Come on. I thought you were just making a meal out of it. No, I ain't making no meal out of it, mate. Yeah, it did. Yeah, I think he might be a slightly better fish, mate. Oh, God, he keeps pinging off his dorsal and that. It's bloody horrible. And bubbles come out, mate. That's always normally a big one when they blow bubbles like that. That's moving some water. Like that. I don't know if it's an erratic small one. I don't know. Oh god! Come on. Push it on, man. Yeah, isn't it just? They've been playing him for a while now. God. This doesn't want to come in. Maybe. <sighs> Come on, you, give up. Feels like he's got a right bit of weight behind him. Yeah, I was thinking that the way he's moving. <sighs> Come on, give up. Please. <sighs> I can't bloody do anything with him. Could just be a good fit. Yeah, mate, I can't. I just cannot get him up off the bottom at all. I know, anywhere near the surface, he's back down again. Oh, come on. Just walking back, Bones. Oh, yeah. Go on, go on, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah? Happy days. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, she's got some width on her. Definitely mid 20, I'd say. Yeah? Yeah, definitely. Look at that. Put a girth on it. Oh, lovely, Jeremy. Yeah, lovely fish. Yes, that'll do. Nice. That'll do. Definitely put some yeah. good Nice. Well, after that intense battle with this absolute beauty, good old Turner's Lake, Norton Disney 25.5. That is one gorgeous calf, as I'm sure you'd all agree. Absolute belter. A bit of, a, bit of an out of the blue bite, this one. 
So well, no one else seems to be getting bites out in the middle of the lake. And uh, yeah, this one just busted off. One of them ones set out in the middle of the pond and I'm over the moon with that. That is one awesome creature. Right, we'll get some snaps of him and send him on his way. Wicked. <laughs> nice. Wow, well, about that. 25 pound, five ounces of Norton Disney beauty. Buzzing with that one. Absolutely gorgeous. Nice to get a slightly bigger one as well. But yeah, the stamper fish in here are off the chain. That is a gorgeous cup. Right, I'll send you on your way. So this is the rig that has been doing the do for me whilst at Norton Disney. Now before you switch off thinking, oh yeah, it's another Ronnie rig. There is a few slight changes that I do with this rig that you may not have seen before. Now obviously most people associate the Ronnie rig with using it as a pop-up rig, but I use it obviously on this session as a bottom bait rig. Now, the difference is, is normally if you would use it as a pop-up, you would have that bead at the very top of the hook so that when it's sat up off of the bottom, your bait is in place at the very top there. Now, what I tend to do if I'm fishing the Ronnie rig on a bottom bait, I move that bead right opposite the point of the hook there. Now that makes that point very heavy when it drops into the fish's mouth. I still add that add little bit of putty there just to make sure that that hook point there is heavy and will always drop in in a point end as the fish sucks that hook bait in. Now I'm actually using this with a brand new link material that we've got out, a material I've been testing for a long time now and our new crimps as well. So if you're a little bit sort of not confident in some of the knots that you tie, then using the crimps is definitely something that will benefit you because they're ultra strong. Now, obviously I've used many a strong knots for most of my angling, but obviously we need to test these things out. And I've been testing these crimps well over a year now and I've not had one let me down. So if you're a little bit unsure about your knots that you might be tying, then move on to the crimps. They will definitely benefit you in them knot tines. Now, another thing that I do that's slightly different, you may see at the other end, is you wouldn't actually have to use a tail rubber this end. I actually leave the tag end long. That just gives you that extra bit of stiffness down by the lead end, which will help you kick the rig away from the lead. So I still like to put a tail rubber over the top of that end there, but perhaps if you haven't got tail rubbers or you don't use tail rubbers, then leaving that tag end long there almost acts like a, a secondary tail rubber as such. So again, something that you may not have seen before, nine times out of 10, you'd obviously cut it off tight, but just leaving that bit long there just gives it that extra stiffness. You doubled over there and um, that will help kick away from the lead. So that's the rig that's done the do for me at Norton Disney. Obviously a couple of 20 pounders now, which is nice. As we're moving into the final night of the trip, I'm hopeful that this will do me a few more bites to come yet. <laughs> No, it won't. Um... No, that's... that's 
we've had a real quiet spell where it went completely flat calm. The sun was out. Oh. And then all of a sudden my margin rod has finally gone off again as this wind's picked up again. So if just the wind started about 20 minutes ago, half an hour, we've just had a little bit of dinner and finally we've got another bite. Definitely a better fish, that's for sure. It feels like it's got a bit of weight to it. It's not a double. Or it might because you can tell how they fight then. And you've caught as many as me. <laughs> <laughs> so this feels like a slightly better fish yeah it's moving a bit of water like Moz has said it came off that margin spot which has done me a better fish today my baited spot has been really quiet but it's been generally quiet for the last couple of hours so we've got a bit more bait out Moz has managed to snag one this afternoon as in pinch one. Pinch one? <laughs> good angling. <laughs> good angling. <laughs> I, I was, I, what I was most shocked at was... Here we go. Playing, pl good. No, playing with the zig today, how we didn't get a bite on the zig. Mm. Just, it just, it blew me up. The fish were all around. Yeah, you could see them on the surface. And you just couldn't get a bite on the zig. It was bizarre. But then I don't... You'd have thought, with a little yellow pop-up, this place sees a lot of sweet corn. You'd have thought a little yellow pop-up would be something they're very used to picking up mid-water as sweet corn falls through it. But it's just bizarre to see fish like that, but not managing to get a bite on a zig. Yeah, it feels nice. It looks, yeah, looks scaly. Yeah. You'll be able to get in the water. I'll get in, I'll be right. Come on. Up you come. Yeah, it's definitely a slightly better fish to what we've had today. Yeah. He's very pretty. Very, very pretty. Do you want to net it? Well, I can. Yeah, because I, I can. In, but... I should be able to just get it back and step up. <clears throat> Just get a bit of height up here. So I'll be able to just bring it up nice. Oh yeah. She's pretty. And she's in. Go on the net man. Oh, she yeah, she's oh, mate, yeah, oh she's pretty. Oh hello. Oh yeah. Oh hello my little scaly yeah, friend. Very nice. Prop another pretty fish, eh? Look at that. That's another 27, 20, I reckon that's 29. You reckon? Yeah, yeah. It's close, isn't it? Let me get that rig out while you're just stuck there. Get oh, yeah, that's a hint of that. It's very pretty. It's got some, look at the back on it. Well, it's been a quiet afternoon for both of us. We just sat down for dinner and my rods rattled off. And would you have a look at that? What a carp. Thank you very much, Norton Disney. Again, this has come from that margin spot where I've swapped over to the dumbbell top with a 10 mil PB pop up. And I'm absolutely buzzing with that. We did think it might go 30 pound, but I couldn't care less. That is one pretty, pretty carp. Need to get some shots done of this, get the rod back out on the spot, and hopefully there might be another one. But this is going to take some beat in this session, that's for sure. <laughs> Go on, mate. Lovely.
just as we're packing up. Managed to get another bite off the margin spot. Did have a bite off the baited area, but unfortunately it came off. And just as we were starting to reel in, starting to pack up the gear, rod's still out. It's uh, tanked off again. There we go. What a cracking little session we've had it on Turners at Norton. Well, I have anyway. <laughs> to be honest with you, this is the smallest fish we've caught this trip. See that little 10 mil PB pop up just sticking out the side. Obviously the food bait come off. My food bait. Your food bait. Didn't we get given the same bait? Yeah, but you keep nicking my up baits. <laughs> That's only because I put all my bait in. <laughs> right, let's get her out. Get some shots done. Tornadoes there, aren't they? Well done, Bones. Last one of the trip, I think, this one was. Yeah, finishing it off nicely. Well done, good skills. Yeah, happy days. That margin rod. Just felt like it should have gone this morning with that sunlight hitting it. Mm. It's really nice conditions. The wind's been pushing over just a little bit. Yeah, it's been a nice productive side of the swim, hasn't it? Yeah, it has, yeah. There's been plenty there, hasn't there? And it's been good. No, it's fish been funny because well you had fish showing over you quite a bit and then you didn't, and yeah. then you had bites, and then, then it just vanished. It completely yeah, died, yeah, didn't it? Yeah. You did have one in the night, though, didn't you? Yeah, I had one this morning, yeah. Only a small one this morning. Mm. And, um, and yeah, that's been it. It's been a bit of a quiet night for the pair of us. It's been really, a mega, I've had a mega couple of days. It's been really awesome, it has been good. Yeah. Yeah, it's no, so it's nice been... coming in and having bait where you're told what you have to use, because it's, you know, it takes a little bit out of it for you and you turn up and you're like, right, what have I got to do? And you've got to think mm. about it a lot more. And I'm really enjoying doing that with you, that's for sure. Yeah, no, it's wicked. Mm. So that is the end of that. Don't forget to comment in the comments below free products from the dna website and if you're chosen that will be sent out to your house so thank you leon holloway for your suggestion on this one your bait's in the post to you and we're gonna get on our toes and head off home ourselves. i need a shower yeah so do i i can smell it <laughs> i can smell you <laughs> right let's get back wicked There's only one mushroom you can pick, and two mushrooms in this country you can pick, where there isn't one that's going to make you really ill that looks exactly the same. It's a giant puffball and a hedgehog mushroom. Yeah, one of them. The hedgehog mushroom is the only mushroom that has spines as gills rather than gills. That's really interesting. Mm. 